Well, we go to the sixth inning and the Crimson Tide leading it five to nothing. And right now, baseball really does take a back seat as we enter the sixth inning. We are pleased to have with us the radio voice of Alabama basketball and baseball. It's Chris Stewart. I know this is a face that is familiar to a lot of those out there among the uh, Crimson Tide faithful. Chris, so great to have you back with us. It is great to be back, and uh, it's nice to do things where I feel normal again. It's it's a lot of fun. People have been incredibly kind. It's been overwhelming how nice they've been, and I'm just glad that I can be here, especially open day. Always something special about that. Well, it was special uh, for you to be here Very in clear. more ways than one as we begin the top of the sixth inning. Again, the tied up 5 nothing. You actually uh, threw out the first pitch, or I should say you sort of threw out the first pitch. You had a bit of an assist, if I can use a basketball reference. You, you certainly may, and it was a good choice on my part because there was literally zero chance of me getting it to the plate from the rubber. Now, I threw out the first pitch a couple of years ago, and I did get it there. It was high, but it was, it was to the plate. I didn't bounce it. But uh, I called on my, my retirement plan, actually, a little bit earlier. My eight-year-old, he uh, he's the one I'm sinking all of it into. And so, yeah, gave it to Hudson Stewart. And he hurt his wrist the other night in a basketball game. I, I kept it from him until 30 minutes before he was asked to throw the pitch. And then that was a strike. Tell you what, for an eight-year-old, that's a pretty that's, good little toss. That's pretty good. He, unfortunately, in the shallow end of the gene pool, uh, he was swimming with, with me and mom. I'm, I'm a giant compared to mama, so he didn't have a whole lot of help in that regard. But he's uh, he got after it. He loves playing, and, and I knew it'd be a thrill. It was a thrill for me to, to have him there with me and, and all three of my children as well as my wife and, uh, to be there. But have Hud throw it, it was a lot of fun. It was very special. Well, let's go back to you said a couple years ago you threw it from the, the uh, rubber, right? I did. Okay, just wanted to make sure. I, That's I the first sure thing. we got to stand on the, the rubber. I did not go front of the mound. No, I was there because I knew if I missed, at least I could say, all right, yeah. I missed <laughs> from where I should miss. Yeah, it's I, always I it's it always bad. You. It's always bad when you go oh, you, yeah. you, in front. You're, you're 50 feet and you still bounce. You're like, hey, yeah, you no got no question. shot. I, I worked on it. Unfortunately, it was a little high and tight to a right-handed batter, but it did get there. Cal remains three and two. Well, uh, this has really been uh, just a whole series of returns for you. I, I got to ask you, just uh, on a personal level, has this ever felt overwhelming at all? Uh, just uh, coming back, and uh, I, I know you're a humble man at heart. Uh, does it ever feel overwhelming? Uh, the, the outpouring, I guess. You, you are muting Lance's mic when you're talking about him being <laughs> humble, right? Because I don't want him jumping in on that. He's known me too long, but uh, it has been overwhelming. You know. People that I, people that you know that you consider friends, and here's Coach Bo and, and the coaching staff, and uh, also the the basketball. Some of my friends in broadcasting, and Nate Oates gave me a game ball after my my first one back, and being able to take care of those folks, my family, uh, was the most important part of all in all of this. But I'm I'm so fortunate that uh, I'm at a place like Alabama where they truly care about people and have been wonderful to me. Um, you know, I missed all of football season. Double play ball if they hurry. Out at second, out at first. Robinson to Jarvis to Williamson. Missed all of football season and then, um, you know, missed the first half of basketball. I picked things up at the, the start of conference play and thankful I could do it. Um, and everywhere I've gone, both home games and road games, Alabama fans and the opposition have been so kind. And I, I can't thank them enough. Tells me, tells me the the reach of Alabama because they feel like they know me from having heard the broadcast, but also um, a lot of good people around to to do what they've done and to reach out the way they have. I'm incredibly fortunate. Well, uh, you've uh, experienced a lot of tremendous things b between basketball and baseball here. One of them is you got to call games involving this fellow to your right. What what was that like? lengthy if he was on the hill because he no I'm kidding <laughs> he uh he was tremendous and, and it was one of those things where I couldn't fully appreciate it at the time because Lance will tell you he played with some some really good talent at Alabama and the league as a whole was was and obviously still is good but there were a ton of guys that that were a part of that era if you will of when he played just before just after and you start to take that for granted, that it happens all the time. And Jim Wells had done such an amazing job of, uh, of making Alabama an elite program. You go to Omaha three times in five years. 
and and you were, you know, around in a great stretch for Alabama baseball. Witness that you you help with the tradition, but you take it for granted. You think that just happens every year, and it doesn't. There's a drive into deep right. Gentry on the track. Nice play. And the side is retired. Do you mind sticking around for another half inning, sir? Be glad to. We'll be back right after this. Alabama up 5 zip. Bottom six, and the news so far good for the Crimson Tide as they lead it 5 to nothing. Josh Carey, Lance Cormier, and again joining us in the middle right here, the radio voice of the Alabama Crimson Tide baseball team, and that's Chris Stewart. And Chris, uh, again, coming back after a lengthy uh, medical battle. Um, tell us, what is your health prognosis right now? What have the doctors told you? How are you doing? Doctors tell me I'm doing great. It was a 91-day stay in the hospital after bypass surgery. I was home for about a week and then a week and a half and then 91 days in a row uh, because of an infection that occurred, and that was the, the major issue that I had to deal, really had to deal with. The, the bypass surgery was, uh, I won't say a piece of cake, but it, was, it really was in comparison to what had me hospitalized for three months was the, uh, was the infection. I'm very, very fortunate. I survived it, had great care uh, at both Brookwood Hospital and, and also at uh, Spain Rehab in UAB. So they were terrific to me and, and very, very grateful for that. I know the big thing, how I had to deal with your weight. How is your yeah. weight coming along? I'm a strapping 150 pounds now <laughs> after going from 165 down below 120. Uh, back up to around 150 right now. That's my fighting weight, about 155. We'll, we'll go from there. Okay. As the count goes to one and two, again, Alabama up 5 nothing. I know we were talking last inning about the um, uh, some of your favorite memories with this baseball team and what uh, some of your favorite memories with Lance. What do you think about this ball club and uh, the prognosis for this season and going forward as the pitch is swung on and missed and there's one away? Excited about it. One of the reasons why is, is the guy that unfortunately just struck out from Alabama's perspective, T.J. Reeves. He's part of a, a group of young, talented guys. You know, there's a ton, and you've talked about them, I'm sure, sophomores and younger that, that make up this roster, at least on opening day for Brad Bohannon, and there's some depth. There's a ton of talent. It's taken three years to get it closer to where he wants it. It's not completely there, but it's a lot better shape than, uh, in, in terms of the numbers than what he saw the, the first couple of years. And I think it's a team he is ready to roll out and compete in the SEC or will be in a couple of months once that portion of the schedule gets here. Well, we were talking about Lance earlier on. You two were together for the uh, SEC championship in 2002. Uh, tell us about some of your memories from that season in particular. Well, again, it's one of those deals where you kind of take it for granted um, that championships are just going to happen. There's the the uh, the championship trophy right there. Heck of a team. Scott McClanahan, I think it was Jeremy Brown behind the plate with, with that one. He used to kid McClanahan. He was... He was like, uh, you know, he's two thirds of the, let's say, the two thirds of the Earth's surface is covered by water, and the other third was covered by McClanahan. <laughs> he could he could flat chase it, help Lance's ERA a good bit during that time. But I mean, in all seriousness, is knowing that you hand the ball to that guy, and you were going to have a chance to win every single time out. But there were other guys that, that he had with him that could hit. They were a really good defensive team. Jeremy Brown, I think, was Johnny Bench Award winner. Mm -hmm. uh, tremendous guy behind the plate, could hit. Uh, had a great eye. Walked a ton uh, throughout his career as well. And I've just named I've just named three. And there, that was a big roster that did some very big things. Well, that was a good play by Holtzwasser, two away. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you are the voice of the Alabama Crimson Tide, both baseball and basketball. So do me a favor. Why don't you take things over here for the rest of this inning, sir? You're going to hand it with two outs. We'll, uh, we'll, try, not, we'll try to extend it if we can. <laughs> Let's hope. Sam Prater at the plate coming back off of Tommy John surgery that uh, limited his season to just a couple of weeks a year ago. But the Helena native takes ball one in the dirt. Going to be a fun player to watch. Again, it's it's uh, his third year on campus, but uh, just a redshirt sophomore officially in terms of his eligibility. Guy with great potential, already shown great leadership, and he's grown up a great deal in two years as well. Rips that one through the hole left side for a base hit. So Bama gets a man aboard with two outs. 
Well, and we, they're we, able to bring another veteran to the plate now. He's played a whole year in Drew Williamson. We had touched on it. I, I thought the biggest thing last year that Alabama lost with Sam Prater getting hurt was the leadership behind the plate. Because to me, as a freshman, he came here on the scene, and, and he wanted to take control. And so I thought this is going to be helpful for them this year with that leadership. And obviously, the cleanup hitter is important. But to me, behind the plate is just as much. Well, and you've got to have a chance to – You've seen the versatility. We know what Prater can do behind the plate, but the versatility of Brett Auerbach. Brett stepped in last year, handled the bulk of the, ca the catching duties. He was supposed to be the everyday third baseman, had to go behind the plate. Well, this year, you've got a third baseman for you in Zane Denton that they're excited about so they can play him there, but you've got to have a spot for Auerbach. He did too much for you last year, too much leadership, too many good things that he's capable of. you got a spot in center, and, and now he's out there roaming that area for you besides uh, being at the plate. That's right, I'm doing play-by-play. -play. Drew Williamson, the guy standing in now. I f forgot I had the baton passed to me. Forgive me. Williamson, we told you that had a really nice freshman year defensively. In addition to figuring it out at the plate, he's got it figured out now going two for two as the ball in the dirt results in a, an extra base for the Crimson Tide and taking second easily was Prater. I think the big thing with Drew this year is developing more power. And we saw, yeah. we saw it earlier in his, first, uh, his second at bat, the opposite field ball off the wall for a triple. But I think that's what Coach Bohannon talked about in our conference call was that for a guy that's 6'5 and big like he was, you would think, oh, man, this guy's going to be dropping bombs, hitting gaps. But he just didn't do that. Love his approach at the plate. Very selective. Had 40 walks as a freshman. You don't really see that very much. But if he starts to develop some power, he can become a, uh, and become a true hitter like that. It can be dangerous. No, there's no question. As he taps out and foul to get the count at two balls and a strike, he is, you know, the, the build is there for him to be that type of power hitter. And, again, they, those – those guys with that size, they don't grow on trees. So you, you need that, uh, a guy with that frame to be able to, uh, to deliver the type of numbers you're talking about. But keep getting on base, keep uh, being a factor defensively at first, and the, the analytics certainly add up. And you know the power is just going to come in time for him as he swings through that off-speed pitch. We were talking about it off-air. Steele has done a really nice job when they struggled in the, uh, the first couple of innings or after the first couple of innings. But he's, he's come on after giving up a long ball and really chewed up some outs in innings and gotten Northeastern to where at least the, the hole in the boat's no bigger than it was when he came in or uh, during the third inning. Still a man at second for the Tide. That is Prater. Two out and a 2-2 pitch is due. And it swung on and missed for strike three, and that'll do it for the Tide here in the sixth. Well, Chris, I appreciate this. It was so fun to be able to be with you. We come back to Tuscaloosa. It's 5-0 Alabama. My pleasure. Thanks, guys.